Artists as a whole are accused of many things. Being adventurous, thinking outside the box, being expert problem solvers. But we are seldom known as greatly organized individuals. As a group, at least, we often have beautiful disarrayed studio spaces, splattered with reference materials, discarded pieces from years ago, toys, coffee cups, and maybe even a half-eaten sandwich. There is beauty to the chaos, but there is also just chaos to the chaos. In this episode, we are going to start exploring organization for artists. We will be coming at this from several different angles, including why we tend to struggle in this way and some practical ways to manage organization digitally, physically, and mentally. What is your biggest struggle with organization as an artist? Let me know in the comments below, and let's get started. So why do artists struggle with organization in the first place? Creative chaos is the first umbrella that I would like to explore. The same things that lead towards innovation and exploration often abandon some sense of order in that pursuit. Our priorities are often dialed all the way over to the abstract creative, and sometimes that simply leaves the organization dial at zero. And this can sometimes seem frantic from people on the outside. They look at the artist who is working in this chaotic space with things strewn every direction, and somehow they seem to be able to track where all these things are, but it seems like a hurricane went through the bedroom or the studio or wherever that space is. Sometimes that's communal spaces and it's a little bit distracting for everyone. But we tend, as a group, to work within some level of chaos. It's almost like the chaos is a necessary byproduct or it doesn't mess with us, or maybe it's actually beneficial. Another reason is we have lots of supplies. Even if you work on a single artistic medium, let's say you just work with pen, how many different pens can you possibly have? And artists, probably more so than lots of people, get so excited about new toys, new media to play with. So even if you're only working with that singular medium, there are probably 72 different kinds of pens you can explore. Are you just working in black and white? Are you using microns? Are you using felt tips? Are you just using Sharpies? Are you gonna throw some charcoal in there? Do you need some white to accentuate it? Do you need grade tones? Do you wanna start working with actual India ink? You wanna use a feather? And this is one tiny little subset of the medium. Now, if you're anything like me and you start exploring multiple media, then it gets a little insane. I have to keep all my drawing supplies separate from all my other drawing supplies separate from my three different types of painting supplies. And then I try to keep my desk uncluttered so that while I'm working on videos, I'm not also struggling with my drawing tablet and all that stuff. And I'm pretty organized and it's still a struggle for me. This is something that so many of us run into because we have so many supplies associated with what we do and we have a tendency to get excited and probably accumulate supplies a little faster than we need to. We have lots of ideas. Be honest with yourself. How many unfinished drawings or paintings do you currently have? Are you even able to count how many things you keep active at a time? We have so many ideas, so many desires, and we can often spin off on them and just make progress really, really, really fast and then we just get distracted by something else, or we get drawn to something else that is just as exciting or more exciting. We have so many ideas that not just the physical objects, like the actual projects, it becomes difficult to organize our thoughts, difficult to organize our ideas, the concepts and where we wanna go. It's almost like reading six books simultaneously and the characters start to hybridize, and you're wondering why Gandalf keeps showing up in Harry Potter, and it just makes your life a little bit more confusing. And this is one of the things that might not get hit on quite as much when we think about or talk about organization is the fact that organization is just is not just the physical things. It's not just putting things in their own places. It's the organization of your thoughts. And that might be all the more daunting, especially for artists. It's a difficult thing to do. Sometimes and maybe often we have limited storage space. And this is limited storage space for all of the things, the ideas that float around in our head, clouding up the RAM of our brain, the actual physical storage space to organize all of the different media that we love so much. And then we've even got digital storage space for all of our artworks because the Photoshop files take up tons of space. 
We often don't have dedicated space for these things because we get so excited, we move in, we don't necessarily plan ahead of time as much as we probably ought to. The other side is too that many of us don't have a space that we can take over entirely. I am 36 years old and for the first time in my life, I have a dedicated studio space in my basement. It's lovely, I am so excited about it. But I could easily absorb and consume a space three times this size just with the stuff that I own now, not allowing for all of the things that float around in the ether of my dream world that I would like to have at some point. So even if you have a space, it can be difficult, but many people, myself included, for the vast majority of my life did not have a studio space that I could have. And this limited my storage, it limited my options. Organization also takes a lot of time, and if there's one thing we know about artists, we don't have a lot of time to spare. The art itself consumes tremendous quantities of time, even if we're working on it just for personal joy, but especially if you're working on it with the intention of improving, of becoming better, or making it a permanent part of your life, professionally or otherwise. Art takes time. Organization also takes time, and for many people, it's not nearly as enjoyable an expenditure of time. If you have an hour in a day to work on your art, you probably don't want to spend a quarter of that organizing things, unless you're strange like me and you kind of find that soothing in its own strange way. It's also easy to get distracted while you clean. How many of you have been working on something like cleaning, something mundane, and all of a sudden you have the greatest idea ever and you have to leave everything behind to get started, or at the very least, write it down? Yeah, that, that's me constantly, and I just pray that it doesn't happen in the middle of the night because when it does, there's no chance of sleep until I write down the concept, the idea, the project that I've just brainstormed. Now, fortunately, I don't usually wake up in the morning and look at that idea and go, well, that was crap, shouldn't have woken up. Usually it is a relevant idea. At least I have that fortunate reality to how my funky brain works. But all of these things are time sinks. They consume time, and often for artists... Organization just takes a backseat to other things because we don't have the time to spare for everything we'd like to engage in. Stress and anxiety. It can be overwhelming to clean, and it can be overwhelming to organize your ideas or the physical objects because we've probably put that task aside for far too long and it's now a massive undertaking. So it can be downright difficult and stressful to work through all that mess. And it seems to grow so quickly. You have your space cleaned on Monday, and by Wednesday, it's a three-mile-wide barge of debris. And it's not like art doesn't carry other stresses and anxiety-inducing components, right? The stress of growing, the stress of feedback, the stress of feeling like you're competing with a thousand other artists out there. So it's not like this is the only stress-inducing component of art. There are so many others. And that just makes the stress from something that is perchance not altogether palatable to you, like cleaning and organizing, it makes it just so much easier to avoid. And it's one more reason why we tend to push back on organization as a group. Rapidly changing interests is another reason this can happen. The same excitement that pulls us into art often pulls us laterally to the next thing. We island hop from art thing to new art thing. This can create many messes or simply a general state of disorganization. And it's something that springs forth from our joy, the joy of trying new things and of adventuring. The last reason I want to touch on today is kind of a funny one, and so let me know if this applies to you as well, artist. Our strange artistic brains tend to remember where things are even in the chaos, and it doesn't bother us as much as it does other people, or maybe even as much as it should. And so it just seems not to be that big a deal. When somebody comes in and they, maybe a parent comes in, and they try to clean your studio or organize some stuff, and then you come in later, you're like, I have no idea where anything is now. We as artists sometimes have this just weird ability to keep track of where all the stuff is, even though it looks like a hurricane came through. So why is organization important? Well, realize that for all of us, it has differing levels of importance. I find that some parts of my life must be organized for optimal workflow artistically, and others, like the stack of papers on the floor behind me, well, less so. 
Let's start with psychological and mental benefits to organization. Keep in mind, as we are such a diverse group as artists, some of these things might really resonate with you and others less so. Efficiency and time management is the first category. When you are organized, you can better guess at how much time a thing will take. This is for several different reasons. You have the ability to look back on past pieces. Maybe you've either scheduled time or you've tracked things. And so you have a good idea of how long a portrait takes you, how long a figural study takes you. It also means you're not shuffling through lots of papers and sketchbooks and supplies to find exactly what you need. You can pop into your studio for the half an hour or hour that you have, and you can just get the work done. So this makes it easier to have an understanding of how much time a thing will consume. When your space is clean, it requires less time searching for things and your time will be more efficiently spent. When your ideas are organized, it's easier to let your mind slip into the flow state and work through whatever you need to work through. For me, this takes the form of keeping notes in lots of different locations, physically on my desk and in my sketchbooks, and then digitally on uh, Google Docs. I've got a couple places there that I can just write notes anytime I need to, and then they aren't floating around in my head, obscuring things from the moment. They allow me to let my mind wander in the moment because the things that would normally be sitting and festering are actually written down and accounted for. Our time is limited and being organized allows us to waste less of that time. When everything is clean and in its proper place, our time is more efficiently spent. I yearn for efficiency, probably more than most. It's just a weird INTJ quirk, but it's something I need and something I'm quite good at. I try to make everything as efficient as it can be while still being somewhat reasonable. This might not be you, but some level of efficiency and time management benefit exists in organization regardless. Being organized can reduce stress. Having a clean work area is less anxiety inducing for most people. Sometimes you aren't even aware of it. Sometimes it's just something in the back of your head and your unconscious mind that looks at the room and goes, I'm already heightened. My heart rate is increasing because there's just a lack of safety in the way things are organized here. It doesn't feel comfortable. This isn't everyone, but this is a substantial amount of the population. Having an organized mental space, calendar, or however you organize your ideas allows you to let go of lingering thoughts, as I mentioned earlier. It allows you to focus on what you need to give attention to in the present. We have a good habit, I would say, as artists of investing our time in the present. I'm not particularly good at it. That's because I'm such a future-oriented person. I'm always thinking and dreaming about what can come next. Part of the wonderful thing of being married and having a child is that I am now far more focused on the now and I enjoy the day-to-day -day more. Being organized mentally allows me and I believe a lot of other artists to do this more effectively. There can be a daunting and ever-growing sense of stress when your space is disorganized and simply taking a few minutes to clean can make life so much more pleasant. And this goes for the physical space, the digital space, and the mental space. Creativity and productivity. This is one that will differ fantastically from one person to another. So know yourself well. Always focus on trying to learn how you function. It's going to benefit you more than probably anything else I'll say. There is some measure of creativity enhancement in a spectacularly disarranged space. For most people, however, we take a productivity dive because it is too difficult to find things to stay on topic when the space, whether physical or mental, is disorganized we accidentally provide ourselves with many, many distractions. By keeping your physical space clean, you can allow yourself to be far more productive while giving you the space to make new messes and give into the creativity. And I think this is crucial. It's not about never being messy. It's about making sure that there's routine maintenance done to your spaces, all three of the kinds of spaces. Sometimes beautiful things come out of the mess. Keeping your mental space organized allows you to think through long-term plans, stay on top of deadlines, avoid procrastination, and other ugly artistic demons. Organized spaces make it easier to focus on whatever it is that you need to focus on. You have a freedom from distraction, a freedom to give in to whatever it is that you need to explore. Sometimes, especially when we're studying artistically, we're working on things that are not the most fun, but they're things that we need to uh, hone, skills that we need to hone or become better at. 
it's kind of easy to let ourselves be drawn into another thing, to go play a few more minutes of our video game, to read a book, to pour over old sketchbooks. So having a space that is more organized frees us from those distractions. It allows us to focus a little bit more. I would assume that it's probably just part of our artistic nature. It's probably part of the creativity and the innovation, but artists seem to be more distractible than most other people. I ran into this in the art classroom, routinely talking to other teachers about particular students in middle and high school. The conversations would often be rather intriguing and curious because students that caused huge amounts of trouble in another classroom, they didn't pay attention, they got up and walked around the room, they were always doodling, whatever it might be, those students often did really, really well in my classes. It was something about their focus that allowed them to really hone in on artistic things, and it made them <laughs> so easily distracted by everything else across the board in the rest of their classes. So there seems to be something unique to artists in this, that we are more easily pulled away from whatever it is that we're working on. Now, there are probably some psychological and or like diagnosable things that might be the reason for that, but I am no doctor in any capacity, and so I'm not going to touch on those things. But I just know that my colloquial and professional experience with students for 11 years in the public schools, artists tend to be more easily distracted than most other students, most other people. And I succumbed to this as well. It took my bosses a while to figure out that I am actually paying attention in the back of that meeting while I pace back and forth, because if I stay still and try to listen, my mind is going to be going through the Lord of the Rings movies for the 17th time. And uh, yeah, we're just different. We're just different creatures. And so understanding that about ourselves, understanding that our focus is maybe more precious than it would be in other situations, we can keep our spaces and our minds organized so that we can really hone in on and mine that focus and keep it free from distractions. There are professionalism benefits as well. Whether simply applying for a job at the local grocery store or for a gig as a concept artist, keeping your spaces organized makes this easier. Your work being organized in a portfolio or on your website makes you far more appealing to a prospective employer or client artistically, and it certainly makes any resume more appealing. Anyone who might want to work with you is going to be put at ease if you at least have the appearance of being somewhat organized, even if it is a work in progress. And for many of us, it's going to be a work in progress for a long time. But you can organize your digital art spaces, you can organize a website, you could even organize your Instagram if that's how you show off your work. Take down some of the things that feel discordant, make sure things are put together nicely. Consistency and confidence. Being organized makes it easier to count on yourself to accomplish things regularly and consistently. It can give you confidence in your ability to do so because you have eliminated many of the variables that make it difficult to be consistent. We all need a little encouragement, and this is an easy way to gain some footing in that department. We have a tendency to doubt ourselves all the time. We have a tendency to give in to imposter syndrome, to think that we could never attain certain things artistically. But being organized, tracking things, scheduling things, mapping things out can give you a little bit of headway in understanding that you have been consistent and you can gain some more confidence in your own abilities, your own capacities, and hold on to that with all your might because you're going to need it, dear artist. You are going to need any chunk of consistent confidence that you can get your hands on. A reduction of decision-making. How many of you feel like there are simply too many decisions to make with your art? Keeping things organized takes away some of that decision-making and allows you to focus only on the things at hand. This may sound funny to some of you, but having worked with students for so long, one of the most intimidating things that I could do to them was just give them the AP Studio Art prompt and walk away. The prompt was basically, you need to have a sustained investigation where you explore a consistent topic over the course of the whole year and produce somewhere between 12 and 15 pieces that do this. Every student got excited when I told them this initially. And if I didn't intervene, if I didn't give any other direction, it would consume them like a voracious beast. 
there are too many decisions to make. And I run into this a lot as well when I gave open-ended projects to students, regardless of grade level. Students often complained that projects were too constraining, so every once in a while, just because I'm an experimenter too, I would give them a really open-ended thing. And what I found across the board in all grade levels was that students struggled to make decisions when every single decision was available to them. Projects then are best designed to work on a specific thing or have a specific goal. A little bit of limiting the freedom allows for better exploration and often for more joy. So having an organized mental and physical space can reduce some of the decisions that you have to make and it can help you hone in on what you really want to do. Let's move over to the physical benefits of organization. These might be a little bit more clear and or direct. Care for materials. You don't forget to clean your brushes or accidentally step on a pencil when you've made sure that everything is in its correct spot. More realistically, perhaps, you are simply aware of your supplies, where they are, their quality, and condition. And these are all really good things. When I am less than organized, I leave paints out on my palette. I don't clean brushes thoroughly. And these are really, really bad things. Though right now I'm plagued by the thought that the first time I, that my cat got in here, she ate two of my brushes. Um, less concerned in the moment about what I should have been concerned with, which is the fact that those were oil painting brushes. And I really don't want the cat to get heavy metals in her gut. There's an inventory awareness and control as well. How often have you purchased a supply you were sure you were out of and then you found the original one a few days later? Now you have two tubes of cadmium red, which isn't the worst thing, but those $12 might have purchased something new, something more exciting, something more fun. You can also track your projects a little bit more adequately and accurately. You have an awareness of where your projects are, both physically, like where they're placed, and then also how they're progressing, how they're moving forward toward completion. This becomes easier if everything is in its proper place. You can prevent damage to pieces. This seems rather fundamental, right? If your stuff is organized, the chances of stepping on something, setting a tube of paint on something that you didn't intend to, this just becomes much lessened. I've unfortunately damaged pieces throughout the years because they're in a stack of 20 or 30 other pieces and they get bumped, they get things set on them. Right now I've got a couple fig trees in my studio and unfortunately they got an infestation of scale and aphids and the honeydew from the aphids, the sticky substance that they produce, was falling onto stuff underneath my uh, fig trees. And so I have a whole bunch of sketchbooks and unfortunately some pieces of artwork that got that material on them. And some of them I was able to clean, but a lot of the paper I wasn't and it's just sticky and gross now. And so yeah, keeping your stuff organized can keep your pieces in better condition. It can help you track them and it can also just help you keep them from being destroyed casually in some capacity. There's a reduced physical strain. As you get older, like me, it can be nice to have to do less searching. Knowing where things are located can keep me from having to fiddle in narrow spaces, climbing on things, all of that jazz. This might sound odd, but I am now at the age where if I sleep wrong or drink water poorly, I hurt. Sorry to all of you who are younger than 30, but this is what is coming. <laughs> all right, so how to organize. This is tough, but I'm gonna try and go through a whole bunch of potential ways of organizing. And this has to be separated again into multiple categories because the idea of how do you organize concepts versus how do you organize pencils, these are very, very different things. So let's start with psychological, with mental organization. Many of our struggles with organization from this angle come from struggling to keep track of our thoughts and ideas. We are often so excited about so many things and ugh, it's exciting and difficult. And so what can we do? Keep lists of your homework, your projects, your assignments, your dreams, etc. If you only have one of these categories, keep a single list. If you have lots of things, lots of categories, keep multiple lists. I would recommend using Excel or Google Sheets because I love spreadsheets, but if you do not, it doesn't matter where you keep the list. Whenever you are on the journey, keep a running list of all the things you are working on. It doesn't have to be complicated. 
So this might be a list of all of the homework assignments that you have to finish and when they're due, if you're in school of some kind. If you're not, still keeping track of all the projects that are in progress can be really beneficial. I probably have 50, and I, I, I hope that's not an exaggeration, or maybe I do hope it's an exaggeration because I'd like it if it was like 12, but I probably have about 50 projects that are in progress in some capacity. Some I will never return to, but many I will, many I want to. So keep track of those things. And this can also cut down on some time too when you dive back in to work on something. I have 30 minutes to work on something. I'm gonna pull up the list. Oh, this piece only had about 30 minutes of time left before I could finish that up. So keep good lists of all of the different things you're working on. And I wanna, before I move on to the next thing, I just wanna take a moment and focus on dreams because it's important to have dreams as an artist. It's important to not throw those dreams away or think about them as being an inferior thing because they're more ethereal. They are important. They will pull you through tough times. They will help give you a reason to work on your skills and hone your uh, skills. So keep track of dreams. And this might just be a list that you don't show anyone that is like, I would like to illustrate children's books some days. I would like to make a video game. I would like to make the new Lord of the Rings. These can be absurd. That's fine. They're for you, for no one else. It's important to keep a list of them, even if you have to keep it under lock and key. Make sure you have a place to take notes. I use my phone or Google Docs for this, and this is important because random ideas are going to occur to you if they have nowhere that they're supposed to go who knows how much chaos they're going to cause in your mind. Set priorities. I think this goes without saying, but in much of your life, if you have many different things that you are drawn to or many different things that you have to do, setting priorities can help eliminate a little bit of the struggle, a little bit of the attention that needs to be dedicated to figuring out what to do in a particular moment. If you have a list of projects, if you have a list of things that you want to do, one of the best things you can do is set priorities for what those things are. This mostly helps organize thoughts, right? This is going to help you understand which thing you should focus on and which thing is the far off thing. Going back to the list of dreams, for example, they're really important, but they're probably not important in today you know, in this exact moment. They're probably important in the long haul. What might be important right now is that you have an assignment due tomorrow or a painting that you're gonna give your mom for Christmas and it's mostly done, or just the six paintings that are sitting in the back of your studio and yelling at you quietly in your sleep because they've been sitting there for six months. Definitely not talking from personal experience here, definitely not. Schedule time whenever possible. Now, this doesn't mean to schedule time, like, so you have lots of time all the time. It means to schedule your time whenever you can. Write up what that schedule looks like. I am going to set aside an hour of time every day, and this hour of time is going to look like this. It's going to be scheduled. It's going to be segmented into individual components that I'm going to work through. This can be a very important thing for organizing your thoughts, for understanding how you're going to spend your time. And going back to something I mentioned a while ago, it eliminates some decision making in the moment, which makes it easier to jump into a thing. This scheduling can be done best by using a calendar. I know there's a lot of people that are very opposed to this, a lot of artists, because they feel like it dismantles some of the spontaneity. But calendars can also be freeing. They eliminate decisions that you have to make they help you avoid procrastination, and they hopefully help you avoid the annoying and embarrassing situations where you forget something. You forget that a project is due. You forget that an assignment is due. You forget that you had a class schedule for a particular time. So try using a calendar. In addition to this, I would recommend some manner of weekly planning. Set aside a few minutes each week on a recurring day to plan out all of your creative pursuits. I try to do this on Sunday before my actual week begins, but I don't always get the opportunity. If I don't, the moment I have 20 minutes free, Monday morning, I sit down on my whiteboard, I copy down what's there so I don't erase anything that's really important, I take over the whole whiteboard and I just write out all the stuff that I have to accomplish this week. This helps me have a visual a cue for everything that has to function. It's beneficial to me. I can do it in a spreadsheet, but for some reason doing it physically on the whiteboard is really beneficial. 
I do this every week. It makes it so much easier to track all the things that I have to do. And I would recommend that if you struggle with organization, especially organization of all the different aspects of your artistic work, try setting aside just a few minutes a week and coming up with a plan for that week. Usually it doesn't take me more than about 10 or 15 minutes. And um, you know, if you need to, set an alarm on your phone for this particular time so that you know, hey, I, I gotta step away from my girlfriend or my boyfriend or my wife or my husband and I, or from the kids and just take a few minutes to organize my thoughts for this week so I know what I'm going to be doing. Here's the thing I don't do, but a lot of other people do, and it's something you might wanna consider. Try using a task management app. There are lots of these. They do a good job of cluing you in on how to finish things. It's just a more organized version of the weekly planning I was just talking about. There are lots of these. You could very easily Google um, just some different resources for it, or you could look on this platform on YouTube and try to find some other people who've talked about those kinds of organizational things. But if you haven't given it a try and you think it might benefit you, I would recommend looking into it, especially if the weekly planning like I described feels a little bit too amorphous. Have a single location where all your ideas and digital things are kept. Again, I use Google Docs for this for all my writing, all my planning, all my scripts. They're all in one place. In the past, I used my computer alone, but now I back things up in my notes and I back things up on the cloud. This is in part due to the fact that I've had a couple really bad computer crashes in the last 20 years and uh, sometimes where a phone has been damaged or lost and we've lost massive quantities of information, data, and photos. And so now I back things up. I was weird about the cloud for a long time. Now I understand its use and I have succumbed. And I would really strongly recommend that you back things up periodically. It's important. It's really hard to do with analog things, but here's a, here's a trick that you can use with analog things too. You can videotape your, that's such an old term. Oh my goodness, I'm such an old man. You can take a video of your <laughs> sketchbooks and your artwork. And you can upload that on a YouTube channel as a hidden video if you want. Let's say you you don't have space for your sketchbooks, you're worried about them getting damaged or you just finished it. Just get your phone, take a short video of all the pages of that sketchbook and you have that video. If you're worried about that video taking up too much space on your phone, you could save it on your computer, save it in the cloud. And if none of those are good options, you can just do that on your YouTube channel. You can do this even if you've never uploaded a video before and you can private the video so no one else can even see it and then YouTube just holds it for you, and it's a video that you have for the future that you can come back to. This is a, kind of a, a random, weird thing you can do, but it's not a bad idea. It's not a bad thing that you could give yourself the ability to do to back up some of your work, especially your analog stuff. Try setting reminders. This is really, really important for many, many people. Uh, this is not altogether different than having an alarm for when you need to do a particular thing. I often do this, but I don't need to a ton because I come down into my studio frequently enough that I can look at my giant list of all the things. So know yourself, know what works for you. If you haven't figured out a structure that works for you, try multiple strategies on here for organization. This is closing out the psychological slash mental thought oriented organizational strategies. And we're gonna start moving into how to organize things physically. This is going to be a little bit different, obviously, because physical objects are very, very different from one another. The organizing of your painting materials versus your drawing materials is very dynamically different. And if you work only on digital uh, art, then that is going to be its own thing. It's gonna be, you know, maybe your iPad and your Apple Pencil, and that's it. Um, if that is it, though, I would recommend getting one of the little gloves because it slides around so much better. It's really a good thing. Good, like, five to $10 worth spending. So let's move into the physical stuff. I think a good place to start is to define the purpose of the space. Let's look at this in two different components. Let's think of this purpose of your studio in general first. So define the purpose of your studio space. What kinds of media do you work with? Do you work only with paints? Then the purpose of your studio is to hold your painting supplies and to make the best experience possible, the easiest experience for you to engage in when it comes to painting. If that is your purpose, you can now start looking at all of the things, how they're arranged and how the space is organized and just evaluate them against that purpose. Do they serve this greater goal? When it comes to the individual components of that space, you can come back to a similar goal, right? So let's follow that same example. 
Does my easel serve that purpose located here? Do my brushes serve that purpose located here? Are they easy to access? Do I have multiple different kinds of brushes? Should I separate my brushes out into having all my rounds, all my filberts, all my fans, all of my points in different places? This might be the case for you, it might not be. I tend to just keep mine separated by medium. I have my watercolor, my gouache, my acrylic and my oil brushes all separate so I don't accidentally mix them. Though the watercolor and the gouache can kind of inter intermix and that's not such a big deal. But really just having an awareness of your space and awareness of the purpose of the space can make it much, much easier to understand how to adequately organize said space. Storage solutions. This one should catch no one off guard. There is, of course, a whole subdivision of our society based on storing things and storing them efficiently. You can use shelves, you can use containers, Tupperware, bottles, jars, cups, racks, boxes. There are so many different things you can use to actually physically organize stuff. I'll give you a run through on a couple that I use real quick just because it's, um, I think, better than throwing out a bunch of random things. I have shelves in my studio for holding all of my paintings so that they have places to dry. They're really thin shelves from Ikea. They only come out about uh, two inches and they're up high so that I can store things that way. I have a singular shelf in my studio that holds old supplies, boxes for things that I purchased like computers or iPads that I want to hold on to in case I need to exchange or return things for a certain amount of time. And uh, they also hold things that I access very, very rarely, like the case for my tablet, which I almost never take my tablet out of the house, but if I do, I have a case for it. I have a four tier high cloth cabinet that just has little boxes inside that pull out. I can pull them out just like you would any normal cabinet. And I use this to keep all of my utility things like scissors, tacks, cords, cables, and other supplies that I don't access frequently. I have a little dolly that is several tiers high as well that I ordered off of Amazon. It's not very expensive. I keep all of my drawing supplies in that. All of my brush pens are in um, mason jars so that I have access to the colors individually. And they're separated by color. So, oh, I'm working on plants, I can grab my green jar. Um, all of my pens are then in their own jar. So all of my microns are organized, not by size or anything, just all the microns in one location. In my painting area, I have all of my oil paints in a container. I have all of my acrylics in a container. All of my brushes, like I mentioned earlier, are just separated by type. And I have extra jars so that I have places that I can put things that I'm working on currently. That way I know these brushes are wet, these brushes are dirty, these ones need cleaned. Um, other than that, I just have a lot of boxes, uh, not actual boxes, but like plastic container boxes for holding old pieces, for holding rags, for cleaning things when I'm working on oil paint, and organizational materials. I literally have a box underneath my foot right now that is for organizational stuff. It's clasps for holding wires and connectors and cables together and things like that. I try to keep things as organized as I can, but uh, I fail most of the time because I like everything we've discussed in this entire uh, video so far, I succumb to in some capacity. So I just work on it all the time and try to clean my studio frequently. The last thing with this piece, throw out old stuff and unnecessary things. This hurts me to say I definitely lean towards hoarding, but if you have a massively disorganized space, there's always a good chance that you just have a lot of old things that you need to get rid of. In the same train of thought, separate things by use. Like I mentioned, all of my drawing supplies are in a single location and they're subdivided. All of my paints are in a single location and they're subdivided. This can make your life so much easier later and if for no other reason, you just know where everything needs to go when you're cleaning. Consider labeling things. It should come as no surprise that I love label makers. My spice cabinet upstairs in the kitchen has every single jar, I have like 70 or 80 of them, all labeled with exactly what spice they are. Uh, this is part of how I keep things arranged, keep things organized, especially when there are way too many things. I don't do this a ton in my studio because I have enough space that things are separated, but it is always a strategy I have in the back pocket if I need it. Label your supplies and organizations if it's helpful, but don't overdo it. Don't need to label every spice like I do. Put things away at the end of the session and clean up. I am guilty of not adhering to this, but goodness is it important. Any work you do at the end of a session to clean up the extra two to three minutes just putting things away, wiping off your palette, cleaning your brushes, is going to make organization easier in the future. 
Clean your studio weekly if the space is large enough to warrant it. Mine needs cleaned weekly. I don't always get to it, but I'm trying. I would encourage you that if you have any space that you do this. If you work on all your art in your room, <sighs> I would encourage you to clean your room weekly. I really do think it's just better for your state, your mental state and your mental health. So I know that might not, you know, might sound like your parent telling you to clean your room, but um, I'm not your parent. I am someone's parent. I try to clean my own room too, so I stick to it. Keep a visible inspiration board for physical representations of thought and ideas. If you collect inspiration physically, then make sure there's a place for that stuff to go because otherwise it can just kind of float around. You can have random pieces of paper and stickers and things that are cool, but they just take up space. They don't belong anywhere. A bulletin board might be a good idea for this. Just don't staple everything to your walls like I did in high school, my entire room in high school, all four walls and starting on the ceiling was 100% covered in stapled pictures, album covers and posters. Uh, my mom told me I could do it, uh, but the dismantling of it when I moved out was tremendous. Well, thank you for listening today. I hope that all of this discussion on organization has helped you in some way. Maybe you feel validated, you feel seen and understood. Maybe you understand a little bit more why you tend towards these things. I hope that this has been helpful, though. Have a good one, y'all. See you soon.